walking through the sun forest. Welcome to Wild Hope Farm. My name is Sean Janicek and I'm here with Rachel Klein, who's our harvest manager at Wild Hope Farm, and Mark Dempsey, who's with Carolina Farm Stewardship Association. And we're out in our fields looking at a research plot that we're working on. And the research is looking at different cover crop mixes that you can crimp and then plant your fall transplants into. So, Sean, I'm wondering, um, could you tell us a little bit of background about why we're growing sun hemp before broccoli? It seems that uh, most people are growing cover crops over the winter. What's going on here? Yeah, it's a great point. Um, you know, growing cover crops in the summertime, you can basically get a lot quicker growth and really um, quite a bit of biomass and as well as nitrogen fixation. Our goals here for our, our research is to compare different cover crop mixes. Um, plant one of our successions of broccoli into those crimped mixes and then look at weed counts which we'll che check every two weeks and then also yield at the end of the end of the growing season. No-till summer cover crops are useful for the prevention of erosion, reduction of water use, and increased crop fertility. And in the southeast, um, having cover crops in place during your hurricane season or prior to hurricane season can reduce damage and erosion to the fields from all the hurricane rain events. In May of 2020, an area of 12 tractor pulled raised beds were divided into 15 sections, three beds wide and 54 feet long, in order to provide three replications or five treatments. The first treatment is just a tilled plot after a crop of a cover crop of sun hemp. The second treatment is just straight sun hemp seeded in that plot. The third treatment is sun hemp and Japanese millet. The fourth treatment is sun hemp, Japanese millet, and buckwheat. And the fifth treatment is sun hemp, soybeans, and buckwheat. Sean, can you talk about what you're really looking for in the mix in terms of maybe tall growing versus low growing? Yeah, so you, you know, having something, I feel like the sun hemp alone doesn't suppress weeds in the understory area. So having something lower growing in there to suppress those weeds, I think is helpful. And then also, you know, the leaves disappear very quickly after you crimp, so all you're really left with is the stems, so I think the higher rates give you more stems per foot. In May, treatments 1 and 2 were seeded with sun hemp at 100 pounds per acre. A month later, treatments 3, 4, and 5 were seeded with their respective mixes. Then in July, treatment 1 was flail mode and disc, and then shortly after, treatment 1 was tilled and bed shaped. All the other treatments were terminated with the roller crimper on July 29th. A week later, after termination, broccoli was planted in all the sections, and we spaced the broccoli at two rows, 12 inches, and ran two lines of drip tape per bed. So, Sean, I noticed that we've got a lot of regrowth here of the sun hemp with, a, I, I will point out, a really nice bed of killed sun hemp, but definitely, definitely plenty of sprouts coming up. I'm curious what your take is on how to get a better kill. We only crimped the sun hemp once, and crimping it twice may have been more effective. Um, also, the roller crimper may have been too heavy, cutting through the sun hemp, causing it to, to re-sprout from laterals. More research needs to be done on crimping sun hemp for sure. All right, so this is the cover crop here. We, we crimped um, 50 days after we planted. And we're crimping all in the same direction, which is important because um, when you, if you have two rows, wherever you have the, the opposite directions of, um, opposing each other, you have a seam where you can kind of get a lot of weed growth. A primary goal of crimped cover crop systems is to suppress perennial weed growth. And overall, perennial weed growth was suppressed in our mixed cover crop plots in comparison to just the sun hemp alone. And then overall, annual weed suppression was relatively high compared to our tilled plot. Um, here we are out in the Sayre broccoli trial patch. Our weed count has now ended and we're into harvest. We have marked our sections um, with these flags. So each three row section is marked on every corner. During our experiment, we're trying to keep our stem length to around five inches. That's just a standard so that we can make sure we have accurate data. The other thing we've noticed out here during harvest is that since we've had a lot of competition from the sun hemp and other cover crops, um, a lot of the broccoli we're seeing is just very like elongated and tall. So you can check out this one. 
we just wanted to talk about some of our final observations. So based on yield, we saw that we had the highest yield per bed foot in the sun hemp and millet plots. Second to that was the tilled area and then the sun hemp alone and our lowest yields that we saw were in the buckwheat mixes. We also noticed that the buckwheat mixes basically reseeded because we crimped to the maturity of the millet. And then unfortunately the millet, which we thought was at the right maturity date, was actually at a viable seed date when we crimped it. So the millet actually regrew. We didn't observe as much competition from the soybean crop but the soybean crop wasn't at a maturity state where it was killed either and it regrew. We didn't expect the sun hemp to actually regrow in our pre preliminary research. So what would some of the further research questions we could ask be? Um, I think we need more research in the area of crimping sun hemp, um, soil moisture, um, or number of passes, or potentially the weight of the roller crimper, what effect all those things have on the ability to terminate sun hemp. And what is the optimal time to crimp Japanese millet? I think based on what we've seen this year, we're going to make some changes for next year, which would include sort of timing our crimping to the millet or to the soybeans, whatever we decide to do in those mixes, potentially crimping twice with the sun hemp, also reducing the weight of the roller crimper, and also just trialing a mix of sun hemp and soybeans. Well, let's do it.